seven o'clock, and we are starting today's meeting. It is the 18th of November, 2019. We will do a quick uh, roll call on Senator Dickerson. Present. Um, Senator Parker. Present. Good morning, Council of Selectmen. Brett Gagnon. Present. I'm here myself. Laura Collins. Present. Okay, great. So, um, Mayor Rickman's sitting alternates. Um, after roll, um, after the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Just to, uh, uh, Mr. Collins, add that, um, um, Ella, the last year will be here next month, and um, Paula Hubert is excused. One, two, three, four, five. That's it, right? Yeah. <clears throat> um, we'll do a alternate. Yep. Um, Jennifer Parkhurst will be sitting in for Elliot Vassler. All right. Any public input? Okay. We'll go to old business. Um, Conservation Commission bylaws discussion on change in election dates from January to December. Um, I have a copy. I only have um, three. Um, I'll give up my copy, but I think if people want to look at the bylaws or anything like that, um, <clears throat> if you look, Brett and I can look at it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Second, on the second page, or actually it'll be page three where it says officers, um, it says January. Um, we usually have our elections. If you want to switch it December, I don't mind, you know. Um, if you wanted to leave it the way it is, I don't have a problem. I was asked by one of the committee members to, uh, if we could change the date to, uh, to December. Um, yes, and we'll open up for discussion. Uh, yes. Uh, so this may have been um, my, my mistake. Uh, this was my recommendation. I thought it must, uh, we voted for members in March. And my only thought there was that we should do it in December or potentially January, allowing uh, members the opportunity to either take a seat here or if they wanted to run for another board, the ability for a three-month window to run for something else. But uh, I guess now looking at it, again, forgive me my mistake, uh, January or December I think would be valuable for my, my ideas. Mr. Collins. Uh, leaving it in January is my preference only because people's terms expire in December. New right. members are appointed. This gives an opportunity to, for people to, you know, you're not going to elect a chairman and then have their term expire and possibly not be, and we're in line with the rest of the boards. Got it. Yeah, I'm, I'm in line also, wait until January also. Yes, Mr. Dickerson. I was just going to add that, okay. yeah, it's been that way for. So I don't think it requires a vote or anything. I think so we'll just hold to our bylaws and uh, move on. All right. Um, Next thing is update on the bridge. I really don't have any information for anyone on the bridge whatsoever. Um, it's been um, a hectic month this past month. And um, I don't know if we're actually going to get this done in November. Um, I will push for it. I mean, I don't get out of my boot until two days before Thanksgiving. So I want to be out there participating in building this bridge if we're going to do it. You know, I don't know. We'll have, probably have to wait until December if that's feasible. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to look directly at you and ask you, Mr. Collins, what do you think? Well, I'm only one person on the board. Myself, I, right. I'd even push it off till the beginning of next year, to tell you honestly. Okay, wait until the springtime maybe or wait until maybe when it thaws, like March, April? No, I, I mean, we can work in the wintertime too. It's, you know, if they do it up in Alaska, we can do it here in New Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have the same tools and techniques that they no, do, I but mean, you we know, can figure anything out. We're all engineers I, in some I, way, you know? But, I mean, what is what is the uh, feeling of the rest of the board here? Uh, Mr. Uh, Gagnon, please. Um, what if we, you know, while, while you're, uh, you know, kind of out on you know, rehabilitation here, what if we at least order the materials and potentially get them to the site delivered, and then once well, we do that, you'll be ready to then construct with us? Well, how about we do this? Um, prices change. Maybe it's better to order now, mm -hmm. and we can always store it where our tool is at. There's plenty of room in that shed, you know, right? There's plenty of room. We can leave the wood in there and then wait until we say go, and, and at least we have it on hand. 
you know? And if we need to order more material, we can do that too, you know? Is the bridge able to be built in sections? Could we even build sections yes. and then bring them out? Can we do any more I have to think about, that's something we have to think about. Yes, Mr. Dickerson. And my thought, well, the cleanest thing to do would be to order it and have it shipped right to the spot that we're gonna mm -hmm. have, instead of having to you know, pick it up twice. That's just more right. time and effort. Yeah. Might, you know, no. If something happens, a rot, I don't know what that building's like, but you know, if, it, if you might get to your pile and have to clear <laughs> ants. I mean, I mean, if it's dry, if it's dry and it's really secure and there's no, you know, what's that shed that it can, you? It can it can stay like, you know, uh, totally preserved all yeah. winter. Right. Then yeah, that that might make sense. But no, I mean, if if it's not a huge expense, you might be creating more, more trouble work. than necessary. True, true. I agree. Yes, Mr. Collins. Uh, so, 24 foot lumber, dimensional lumber. Yeah. Big. It's heavy. We're gonna put it in the tool storage shed. I was over there to put the tools right. away, and it's, it is quite quite cramped over there. We can definitely build it in sections, yep. but there's, as far as I, I can't get a 24 foot piece of material from A to B in my truck. Yeah. I got a six right. foot bed. Right. Yeah. So would it be better off to wait to order the wood when we're ready to go? I, I think so, and then move the wood from Right A to B. We had uh, permission from Wilkinson, yes. Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Wilkinson, to deliver the wood right to their driveway right. and then tow it in from there. I believe Mr. Dickinson has his Polaris that could easily navigate down to the area and we could drag it behind his, right. his, his machine if you'd be willing to bring it out there. Just a quick thought, sure. and I was gonna bring, up, bring this up later, but I did a quick, you know, I told everybody that I would look into see, to see which organization helps coordinate trail work in New Hampshire? And there's a couple of different, well, there's one main one called trailrights.org. And they work with the UNH Cooperative Extension, AMC, and the State Trails Bureau on a regular basis. So they do a lot of work up in the Whites, but they also have helped Milford Conservation Commission, Brookline, a couple of the other towns around there. So we could always talk to them for some advice. They do training sessions on building bridges as well. Okay. And, and proper, you know, some extra, I don't know, tool training, uh, construction techniques for trails in various situations. You know, to, without going into the details on it. All right, so is that, go ahead, Ms. Parker. Is that something we can invite them out and take a look at it and show them what we're trying to do? And well, I quickly looked at their website. I hadn't talked to anybody yet. I was going to ask for some permission to maybe pursue that a little bit further. But from what I saw on the website, um, they are, they are, they're run totally by donations uh, for the most part. Um, they do a little bit of contract work, and they have a, um, a form to fill out if you have a project. So I'd have, to, I'd have to complete that form, submit it, have a conversation, see where it goes. I don't know what their backlog is. They were active this year. They were active even this week on projects. So What's the name of this um, website? Uh, trailrights.org. Um, trail, W-R-I-G-H-T-S dot org. Since we have some time to kill, you know, it might be worth at least asking the question. Yeah, I think it's absolutely. A ridiculous backlog, then you know mm -hmm. we say forget it. But yeah, yeah, and I think there might even be another organization. There's a and they're tied into a Facebook uh, site that is I think it's like New Hampshire Trail Workers. Just remember, you're, they're asking for a donation, and we have a very limited budget this year, so we want to try to keep everything in budget. You know. That's the only thing we have to yeah, do. Yeah, but we could always donate if we, I, I don't think that's a limiting factor is what I'm saying. Okay. okay. They, they may not be looking for an immediate donation from us. Okay. Something more say. down the road then? Yeah. All right. yeah well, I don't we, think that why don't we do this? an immediate donation is necessary, something down the road, or they, what, they probably get a lot of donations from other companies, other organizations um, tied into AMC and other places. Mr. Collins. Uh, sometimes these organizations work on, uh, we'll call it horse trading too, where if we can supply labor for a couple of days on one of their projects, they'd be willing to supply labor on our projects too. But 
okay. uh, overall, I, I, I'm pretty confident that we can do this on our own. I mean, it's yeah. just a matter of timing. We did start a little late in the season for this, so. Right, right. Yeah. We'll catch up. We'll right. catch up. Right. You know? I, I don't think, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good project. I think oh, it's, it's a, a great project. project. We both agree upon right, we, I think so. we all agree upon that. It's a great right, project. So. But, I mean, if you guys would like to do at least a precursory investigation sure. and then talk right. about it one quick time in December, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I'll make a motion that uh, I'll attain the motion that Ken Dickinson have the ability to to search other means to build a bridge or different websites and organizations that have no cost to us at this time. I'll make that motion. You want to rephrase it? Dun, dun, dun. You rephrase it to a different manner? No, no, no. I'm waiting for somebody to second it. Second that motion. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're going. Uh, open up for further discussion. All right. All those, we will take a vote then. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposes. The ayes win. All right. So, Ken, you can, uh, before um, you do anything, um, you got to, I want an email on it. Keep me abreast. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. I yeah, appreciate as that. As usual. Yeah. All right. you, you do an excellent job with that. I, I appreciate that. Um, moving on then, we'll go straight to the signs. Um, I had an issue with the signs. Um, um, the word above public access had the word area above it. So I had the uh, sign, the, the word area removed and had the signs um, redone. If we were going to pay that much, we might as well get them fixed. Um, I got um, eight signs. It says public access only. It's almost the exact same um, color to what we had before. Um, the only thing is um, I had talked to Elvis and them. I went over, I think it's 15 bucks, but I um, <clears throat> break the bank, right? Um, but I had spoken, and then there wasn't a problem going with fifteen dollars. And they even said they might be able to um, um, to round it down. So there was no guarantees. So it was basically it was going to look like that, right? And then I take the word area out and just put public access. And they had difficulties with the uh, town label, the town signature up there. They were having difficulties. So um, I had to take a picture of it. I went back over to Woodland, took a picture of it, and sent it to Jason, and Jason was able to uh, fix that. So, but he had other projects that he had to do because we're, they were going to fix them that were in line, so I won't know until tomorrow or Wednesday mm -hmm. when they'll be done. And um, though I have the poles and I have the hardware um, also in the shed where the tools are at. So, and when I get the eight, we can either put a couple up, you know, Mm -hmm. When we get them, or we can put one or two up, we can, or we can wait till the spring, whatever the, <laughs> the case may be. They're they're ten foot long, so that we can go, we can smash them down to about three feet, maybe three and a half, four feet. We want to leave it right around the five foot level, so it's like almost eye level when people see it. You know. Um, any thoughts, ideas, or questions about that? No. Nope. Okay. Moving on. Um, schedule work day for Musquash slash Corbin. Um, I was talking to uh, Mr. Dickinson about that, and um, I'll let him discuss that further. On um, Corbin doing a doing a trail day. Correct. We want to schedule a work day for either Musquash, and we just said we'd do Corbin. Yeah, or I was thinking. Uh, I could just go to my list, but if we want, maybe first we should look at a date. Okay, all right. To so see if people are available. All right, let's get our calendars out. We have we want to do some um, work on Colburn. If you guys remember, we took that hike, and there was a spot up there that um, I would love to see an observation. That I think that would be cool. That's like five, ten years down the road, of course. And I mean, wouldn't that be exciting? You know, be a beautiful I would attraction. Love, oh, it would be. It would be. But that would require whatever. But anyways, we want to start some trails up there. <coughs> You know, get something going, clear out some area up there. Maybe some people might want to do um, a winter hike, you know, come this winter. Get their snowshoes out, go up there, 
Maybe we can mark some trails with some ribbons or some paint, whatever the, the markings will be. If there's something we gotta have made, you know, or if it's just paint for now, um, we can discuss that, you know. Um, but I'd like to be able to set a date, if we can right now, that everyone's free. Mr. Collins. Uh, uh, well, let's set the date first, and we'll okay. talk about specifics. All right. I just had a question. That's so fine. we can do it. Now, I get my boot off on the 26th of November, so I'm just asking if we could do it after that. Either if it's, I don't know if Thanksgiving weekend is a good idea or not, the 30th or the 30th or the 1st. Go on. I could do either for the sake of argument. Okay, I can do either one of those days myself. Uh, the following weekend, um, I can't do it, the 7th, the 8th. But if you guys want it now, um, Friday, at most people are off Thanksgiving, if that is a thought or an idea. The day after Thanksgiving on Friday, no? No. No, okay. Shopping day. Shopping, oh, oh yeah, gee. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm not gonna get into that, all right. Saturday or Sunday is okay for everyone, maybe? I, I can't do that that um, Saturday after Thanksgiving. Can we do Sunday? Um, Sunday I, morning? Yeah, it's, hard, it's just hard for my child care coverage, so. Um, you bring her along. Yeah, yeah, I could. Yeah, as long as she's not sick, I, I can small bring her. Axe. <laughs> 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 Little ice picks. I, I probably should say that I was planning on do, using the chainsaw in a few locations, and yeah. mainly <coughs> mainly at Musquash, but I can I can talk to that in a minute. Okay. And, and it is a chance I might be able to get it done beforehand. But I wanted to, the chainsaw work. I thought that it'd be best to do it in a group setting. So, just for safety okay, purposes. So let's go. go ahead. Well, I'd say Sunday. I, I'm okay with Sunday. I think I'm, that's pretty good. I'm go I'm good with Sunday. My boot will be off. I'll be ready to go. <laughs> I, I, I don't know about my insurance because I've been in the boot for a I, long time. I, uh, I am going to be, well, I was going to bring this up in commissioner comments, but oh. I'll bring it up a little earlier. Uh, I will be doing uh, the boundary walks of all the properties. On Sunday? Uh, well, on for the next couple of weeks. It, it takes, a, takes a little while to, to get that done. So, uh, I mean, I'll go out on a Sunday morning. It, it, you guys aren't going to plaster this one small piece of property with no. 20 trails. No. One no. trail and no. one loop. I mean, no. so right. Yeah, we can at least get started, and, and maybe so it, it's it's be, it it's and done it's, already. I didn't get right. to the work right, list. Right. <laughs> so why don't you why don't you schedule in for the thirtieth? That's Sunday, right? Okay. Yep. At the nine. first. Uh, the f December first. December first. December first at nine o'clock. Um, Ken. Sure. Um, we should ten o'clock at ten a.m. Sir. Oh, nine. nine. Nine, sorry. Okay, nine. October, nine o'clock, December 1st, right? And. <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, now that we've established a time and a date, uh, I think Mr. Gagnon had some plastic uh, marking material. I would like to, instead of using paint, or other methods, I'd like to use this plastic material to mark the trails, to blaze the trails. It's more easily seen. It's it lasts a lot longer if exactly. you still have that available. Yeah, so uh, if I may, kind of going to what we talked about earlier, if we do get a professional trail marking you know, organization to give us some good guidance, the, where the markers came from was my father. Mm -hmm. And so he did this beforehand. He actually worked with the people who helped with the White, uh, White Mountains to make the trail systems very similar to the White Mountain trails. Right. So he gave me some leftover markers. So if we want to get a similar training, we can certainly use those on all our properties. I have a, I have a bandsaw at home, so if we want to cut a particular shape, I can cut a particular shape on them. I'm not sure what kind of shape you have. Just let me know what you guys want to do. Round, triangle, square. Are they plastic or are they uh, they're, steel? Or no, they they're they're like a plastic nylon, nylon um, and based on what I've been told, rudimentary is you, know, you just put one nail into them so that the tree can grow, right? And they, and they'll they're mm -hmm. much brighter, they last longer, they take a little less maintenance than even right. paint does. So you have a sheet? I uh, know I have a whole bag of these leftovers that my right. father did not use. Yeah, right. That's a savings right there. Right. But if I could, yes, Ken. Quick question because I I think he, I know where he may have gotten them from. Um, but, or at least I, I knew a company that used to make them even for the town here because we used to have uh, wetland 
buffer markers to delineate the buffer when it was a contingency of the plan approval to have the markers done. So, which unfortunately that's, that practice may have fallen to the wayside a little bit. But, um, but uh, so there's a place up near Concord that does them if they're still in business. I, they might but, do them here too. Well, awesome. there, was a, there was one guy that was doing a lot of them for a lot of the towns in New Hampshire. So it, I, it'd be interesting to see if that individual's still doing it or not. Um, but it, are your markers blank or, or because normally, you know, I, like on the long trail, like I walked the long trail within the last couple of weeks and those mark, those are the white markers, they're nice and they have like some black uh, emblems that have been um, imprinted into the plastic. So it, it, it they're not, um, it's something that's, you know, done by a machine. Yeah, these are very uh, professionally made, machine made. They are more of a plastic nylon, and they have uh, different shapes, different colors, and different symbols depending on the trail and the direction. Mm -hmm. Oh, I oh so these I, are, I, those are, are these markers. well very well, legitimate. So the, these are the blazing markers that you're using, for instance, on the trail between Gumpus Pond and and uh, the end of Gowling Road, correct? Forgive pretty me, sure. I, I don't remember yeah, what those I'm are. I'm pretty sure what they are. Yeah, I, I think so. Oh, that, yeah. That they're makes sense. About, they're, 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 they're like, they're, 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 they're used commonly for cross country yes. ski yep. trails. Yes. Let me intervene here. I, I think so. um, what Brett's offering is great, and we appreciate that. Could you take a picture and send them to us? Sure. So we still would know what we're looking at? You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll get some more information on the whole, <clears throat> on all yeah. the marketing. And see what you got for information about who made those. Those are great. That's great. Let's move on to. To Colburn about what you want to do over there. Okay, so I mean, I just looked at the properties a little bit because we also just had a trail work day yesterday. Right. How did that or, go? Good. I'm mean, good. Right. Meaning it was a two-man wrecking crew. Right. I would have been there if I wasn't if I wasn't uh, in a boat. Right. It's so, and I'm going to bring this up where we're talking about Colburn and Musquash and all that, but we right. definitely got to go back into the town forest and reblaze the perimeter trail because a lot of the markers are non existent anymore because of the tree clearing. Right. So, again, if you got more of the red rectangles, that's what they're. I'll get with you on it. Sure, sure, sure. I'll get more information. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Got to finish one project at a time here. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, the, um, I mean, I only. Like, for, well, I put Musquash and Colburn first on the list because they're on the agenda. Mm -hmm. So for Musquash, I just have um, cut a couple of trees along the Colburn Trail. Also, along that trail, we, it hits the power lines. That needs some maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, it's mostly just you know, making sure that the rose bushes aren't in the way. Mm -hmm. Same thing a little bit further down on the um, Nash Trail. And uh, there's one spot along the Meeting House Trail I could use. Oh, there's also a tree that's leaning that looks like it's going to fall anytime. So it's another trail, another tree that's not, not too big that we should take down. And there's also a, I'd like to remove the tree in the parking area. There's like an apple tree right in the middle and it kind of gets in the way of things. In Musquash? Yeah, Musquash. There's a, there's a, there's a tree down? No. There's, th well, there's, there's. It's just a tree, like on, like on a cul-de-sac, you'd have a little garden oh, area. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go around it. Yeah, right. you, yeah, you can just go around that. Okay. So yeah. uh, you talked about using a chainsaw. Are you going to use a chainsaw up in Colburn? Right, and then on Colburn, we have the the trail is already cleared enough to right. walk all the way to the view with a chainsaw. Okay. Right. So it's really just clearing the view out, possibly painting or hanging some markers to uh, delineate the trail. And that's just the top part, not the bottom part. Maybe GPSing the location creating a map for it this is you know kind of after the fact doing a little trail description that kind of works into a longer term project that actually doing it for all the properties and confirm the trail name and the if we have to 
the the rename of the property with the BOS if it hasn't been done yet, if that is necessary. Right. So which I think it might be based on. Okay. Yep. All right. So what we can past. do is maybe when we do um, when we go to Colburn that day on December first, if you can bring some markers with us. Certainly. Sure. For that and doing some of that. Sure. How many do you think we'll need? Quite a few. Yeah. Well, it right. depends on how you want to blaze the trail. Well, you want to make sure people can see it. Well, yeah. usually we do every. You know, 100 feet max, 50 feet max. And don't forget, I mean, there's no leaves right now. So you're right. going to see it very easily. Right. So I, I would yeah. want to be make sure that 100 feet, if you're if you're turning and weaving and winding, that's not, that, I mean, that's too far. Right. right. We'll have to engage you know, that and get out bet there. You go based on line of sight. So exactly. if you can see a, a point of, a sight. point further ahead, 25 feet ahead, that's where you put a blaze. I, I agree with that. All right. So. And, and, and the trail, I'd say, is pretty straight but okay. there is some grade change there right. so we can do another evaluation depends. when we get out there on site yes mr gagnon i don't mean to uh totally d just you know, change <laughs> the subject but you did bring up a good topic that i think needs to be noted for the record too that we have uh used this name colburn forest before due to our past colleague who worked with us uh, based on the history but i don't think we went through an official process of notifying the bos and the fire department and so forth right. we can't call it forest well, Colburn, like whatever Colburn, you call it. Colburn, we called it something, Colburn well, we Conservation. It conservation. There has to be a, a, a legal way of town. doing that. I don't think we necessarily have to go to the town when I talk to the, to the administrator. Okay. We just have to go and do it ourselves. Um, it was mentioned um, at Board of Selectment one time about letting the fire department know, but then someone said the fire department goes off a and number address, not off a name. So it's um, I'll have to go back to these to our town administrator and just to get that clarified before uh, we do anything else. We may want to let NRPC know as well. Because I'm just thinking, if you look on Google Maps, uh, a lot of times you'll see names of properties. So there's got to right. be someone we mention right. so that information gets updated. And, and the thing there is you can go by a street name, but if they don't know that's conservation land, they're going to go in there and not see anybody. Right. So you right. may want right. to do both. Do both. Yeah, we can do that. And you, right. you want to notify police and fire. Right. All right. And uh, one Hunt. other thing to add to that is you, if we create a map for it, we, have, we should submit that, too, to the fire department because if somebody has to, as an emergency, out on a trail, the fire department has to know how to find them. So a map, street address, and whatever the official name should be. Well, I, I think that's a great idea, but we've never done that to any of them. Yeah, so they, you're saying we should start doing that? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, they, they, the, the numbers that you see out on Musquash, uh, uh, there, the, there is a map submitted but the, to the fire department for Musquash um, mm -hmm. um, conservation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's there's a map. They have and, a map and map. Kimball oh, yeah. Hill Town Forest right. had the same. I know process. it's on our website. Right. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. So. so those two properties are on our website, and the and the maps and the right. trail naming was all right approved by the BOS. Yeah. Right. Okay. Separate meetings. Right. We also may want to look at. Uh, I mean, I'm jumping the gun here, but and yeah. I was going to bring this up in January after. Uh, to get the ball rolling for next year, but like Rangers Town Forest, blah blah blah, they, it's there was hiking trails back there. There wasn't a town forest there. Again, the fire department doesn't have the information probably available to them currently, and a and a trail layout back there. So we we got a lot to do in the upcoming year. We got a ton of stuff to do. And all, all the apparatus has a map book in it, and that's where they're kept. So when they get out there, they can take it with them. So right. that would be very important to get to them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the and the BOS uh, approval was pretty. It was rather cursory. It's 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 get gets put on a list of items, and then they go. Yeah, considering it. it's town-owned property, we probably <laughs> should have an idea that we, right. you know, <laughs> right. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I, I can look into some of these questions, getting some of the answers, and supply you in the, in the commission with what I find that we can discuss at our next meeting to okay. move forward with the official process. Sounds great. Yep. So, I mean, the only other thing that I'm just looking down the list right here to see if there was anything else that wasn't mentioned. So, like at 68 Pelham, we talked about putting some markers up. Um, and also probably doing the same thing, GPS, and going through, pro through the process that we just mentioned. Um, maybe work with 
Jawanda Koffler to see if we can have some signs made up at specific locations like has been done at Benson's so it looks like an extension of Benson's because he made the signs out there. That's why they look the same as the ones at Musquash. <coughs> but that's just a thought. Then um, And then as we went out when we were walking at Kemble Hill, this probably going to be some or some tweaks to the trails, and right. Bill said that he'd be interested in you know, updating them with the GPS and thinks that uh, getting a new map wouldn't be a big deal. So we should probably put that on the list. Um, and and I agree that we should do some more trail work out there. So we did, you know, we got a good start on things, but. Um, you know, like number one would be to re-blaze re the trail that's currently there so that people don't get confused as to what's the trail and what's a, um, a skitter trail, temporary skitter trail. So, um, and then on Kemble Hill, the, the invasive uh, treatment has been totally completed, but we'll put that on the agenda for next year. We'll be talking with Bay State Forestry, and we can follow up with them because they're going to be pretty soon. They're going to be doing. Um, they're all. They'll be available to do the Rangers Town Forest uh, Forestry Management Plan, and then. they have to file something, maybe they can do it on the same day. All right. Um, All right, so, so it's not a big deal for them to file their invasive treatment out at Kemble Hill. Um, and I briefly mentioned maybe as a long-term project for the next year or more to start working on a trail guide. I can probably lead that effort if All right. people want. And That's it for that item. Okay. So let's, uh, that ends old business. Um, under new business, uh, there was something that uh, Mr. Gagnon had. So we'll, I know it's not going to take long. I know he wants to talk about rangers and trail names. Uh, you, thank you. So sorry for this is kind of a late addition. Um, I was wondering if I could have the permission or how we go about uh, legally naming trails. Uh, there's a gentleman I'd like to nominate uh, to name a trail after and was looking for your input if that's okay, and if that is, then to go ahead and, and kind of make it official. But um, you know, I'd like to uh, represent Mr. Ted Trost um, for a lot of his work he done in town. He volunteers as well as work with his property. Um, he was in support of it, and I'd like to potentially propose the idea of making the, the Trost Trail, if you guys are you know, okay with that. Let's, uh, let's take it to the town. You want to put it on the website? Oh, make a. You want to put it on the website and see? Oh. Uh, yes, Mr. Collins. Uh, do we have a layout of the Rangers Town Forest with the trail system currently? We kind of do, don't we? Do we? Yeah. Have we? I mean, I've walked the property, but I walked the boundaries yeah. with my GPS. I haven't right. technically walked all the GPS, so I don't have a track yeah. of, it, of the existing trails. I mean, I have no problem in, in naming trails. I know what you're saying. Right. I think we should at least have a layout of the property first. I think I actually have a layout. In it. I get, yeah, we all <laughs> before we go there. Yeah, I had two but, things. And I think if you're going to name it out to somebody, you shouldn't ask the town. The committee wants to name it out to a person. You guys should just do it instead of going and ask the town. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I, I have well, no problem with that. Give the town a little bit of input what they uh, what they want to call something. But we can wait until the beginning of the year if we have a new chairman or not. Right. Or we want to name it now. I'm I'm kosher, Mr. Dickerson. My quick thought was, let's wait until the management plan's done and okay. then think about trails. All right. Sounds good to me. So, and I guess I'm, I'm either way we'll go, uh, just as far as a, a kind of a constructive criticism. We can always just agree on a trail name. Doesn't mean we have to put up signs and make it official, but that way, when right. the trail gets made, we already made an agreement. The trail name is there, and we put it up all in one swoop rather than waiting to make the trail and then name it. Just no, agree on a name we, now. We can make the trail and then name it. You know, it's uh, we can go either yeah. way. 
Um, why don't we just table that until the new year, until the master plan comes right. out? Okay. All right. All right. So next thing is financial status. If everyone has our financial reports, All right. um, I know this is kind of um, confusing. It's confusing to me, um, but um, our budget for prior year budget for last year was fifty one thousand. The budget for this year is fifty one thousand four hundred and four hundred and fifty three. And the prior year was sixty seven thousand seventy nine. Um I was told that the fifty one thousand four hundred and fifty three should be enough even after we get our grants from Amy Summer Bull. Um so I still have to talk to Kathy Cabinteer about um, total purchase of property, which says a negative $391,029.05. That's supposed to be reflecting over to the second page of the conservation um, fund, where it, re where it reads $440,817.48, which is totally um, not explained, so I can't answer any questions that you may have, but I can forward the email that um, if she sends me something to all of you for a better explanation, you know. Uh, but you can see it says September, and it doesn't go up to October or November, but we're in November. So I think it's usually one month behind. So when we get this report in December, we'll see October's in there. All right. So... Next is the minutes. Correspondence, approval minutes. We'll do, cor we'll do minutes and correspondence. It should go the other way. Um, does anybody have any questions? Let's do the first one, the meeting minutes. Well, we won't do the non-public session yet, but do the one before that. Um, anybody have any questions, concerns about the minutes? Uh, Any corrections? Yes, Mr. Gagnon. Maybe this is an improper place to ask this question, but looking at the minutes, there was a spec section for Merrill Park update, which we deferred, and then it wasn't on today's meeting. Forgive me, but it was, was there an update for today's meeting on that? It does say defer right below it. Yeah, yeah. Like last, last month it was deferred to this month, so this month we don't have a topic on no. it. No. Uh, okay. Probably won't be until the beginning of the year. Okay. Thank you. That's all. All right. So there's... Um, Make a motion to uh, approve the minutes. I'll make that motion. Second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nays? None. Five to zero. Next one. Non public. Did my, did my agenda. Non public sessions. Anybody have any questions, concerns, thoughts, any spelling errors, commas, anything? Make a motion to approve. I'll make that motion, sir. I'll second the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Uh, Mr. Good. Chair, do we have to seal those minutes? Forgive me for asking this question multiple times now. But no. We don't have to seal okay. um, There's actually nothing in here at correspondence, believe it or not. So we'll go straight to, um, to uh, Commissioner's comments. I'll start with Mr. Collins. Uh, all right. I have none. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Uh, I, like I said earlier, that uh, uh, I will be starting the uh, annual reports for Musquash and the uh, Tri Town Forest out off of Griffin Road. That includes uh, Mr. Parker has walked it with me last year, part of it. Uh, a walk, and Mr. Dickinson did too. A walk around the perimeter of the properties, make sure there's no encroachments, blah, blah, blah. I do our reports, I do a GPS track, pictures. And I send them up to the state LCHIP program for Musquash and the Society for Protection of the Hampshire Forest for uh, the Tri Town Forest. Uh, they usually take, well, Musquash is a couple of days because uh, they usually do half uh, at a time. Uh, the Tri Town is usually just one day. And they try to be as accurate as possible with the GPS track. So uh, there's a lot of slugging through the trees and bushes. So anybody who's interested in, Joining me on a walk, 
I'll send out the email to everybody, and if you guys want to come, feel free. I will. All right. So. I did last year, but I didn't realize you did all of them like that. All right. I think only came twice. Well, I think you came once. One year. Twice. Right. Yeah. They're very cold. Extremely uh, they're, they're due by December 31st, so right. I usually try to get them done ahead of time. And I always have trouble sending them through email, so I usually hand, hand it off on a CD to Elvis, and he submits <laughs> it. <laughs> so. All right. Ms. Parkhurst. Um, we'll be walking Musquash Saturday, 9 to noon, um, for Hike Hudson. So looking forward to having a group go out there and check out the trails. Do you um, send... Um, Miss Newt, a note, and have her put it on the website? Yeah, I will. Yep. Okay, all right. Do you usually do that? Um, I did on the last one, <clears> I believe. <throat> um, yeah, so okay. I can do that and make it Please a do. Practice. Please do. Um, Mr. Dickerson. Yeah, I got a few. Um, and, oh, and that, on that, Keep yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying, on that note, yeah. um, it, the last trail work day wasn't posted on the web, website, so it and, and I, yeah, I think I had talked to you earlier about the other stuff that isn't on it that used to, that was part of the website and it's now gone. So we got to work email. to try to update that a little bit more. And there's a even um, the timber harvest posting is still on there too, and maybe that should be erased or the wording changed. Um, so a little, little tidbit there. So I mean. Um, let's see. I did have a couple of things, and I'm just going to go through them. The first thing was is I did reach out to Amos Smagula today, and I got a quick response back from her that I'd like to share with you. This is in regards to the uh, Robson Arnick pond treatments, and she says, I surveyed both ponds. Unfortunately, Arnick had more regrowth than I had expected. Robinson looks a little bit better, but needs some work. I'm receiving bids right now, and I should have more guidance as the week goes on or early next week, more to follow. So we'll see what one. happens. Yeah, exactly. So, um, well, I made sure I CC'd you on you the did. email as I well as that. Ran. So that's that. Um, the, the other thing was we had a pretty good meeting um, yeah. beginning of November up in Pembroke. The oh, rest of the conservation commissions, sure. and you know, I figured Brett might want to say a few things, but I just wanted to uh, let everybody know that um, one, all the workshops that were available, or the majority of them, have notes that are posted on the website. So to get there, you go to nhacc.org. You click on. Um, annual meeting on the left hand side and that brings up a banner and then you click on workshops in the middle it shows all the work, different workshops and the ones I went to all had postings um, that was the wetland identification uh, field session in the afternoon and then uh, prior to that was the role of BMPs are and NHDES wetland rules. And the morning session was conservation land purchase options for conservation commissions. Um, might be off a tad, but that's it. And I'd say the, probably the most important thing that was brought to my attention is that there's numerous rule changes. Uh, it's actually, I was told, a comprehensive reissuance of all the wetland rules. It's the first time they've done this in 20 years. They go into effect December 15th. So it's not a comp uh, wholesale rewrite of the regulations, but it contains several different updates and different various sections. So we really should have guidance on this. I can probably um, you know, help do a talk on it. I need to read up on it more myself, but I'd like to see if Elvis and possibly another NHDES staff can come down. I'm going to contact to, uh, yeah, to figure out uh, what might be a good day to do some public outreach right. so we understand what has changed. 
um, to the extent that we can. So it's something that we probably want to chip away at a little bit. Um, like for instance, just as an example, uh, accessory structures within 50 feet of the water's edge for shoreland permits have a bunch of new rules associated with them. And any walk, walkway patio or um, path has to have a pervious material. Um, so, no, basically that means no regular pavement within 50 feet of the water's edge on the um, shoreline protected area. Okay. All right. So, but that's just one example. Um, so, there's also a new search tool on the NHDES website. down here it's called a wetlands permit planning tool and for instance you're able to click on it, it gives you a permit number and a link to one stop I didn't attend that session but I found that we could probably even do a session just on that to learn how to use that tool and it's pretty straightforward from the uh, PDF that was posted on the website um, what else There's a, going back to the rule changes, that there's a book, it's called, um, I call it a book because it's like 100 pages, the role of BMPs and NHDES wetland rules. Found that to be very helpful. Just started reading part of it. Um, see if I covered, I'd say, That covers most of it that, you know, when, when you go, uh, maybe just a little quick tidbit on the, um, the first session. For the conservation land purchase op options, they went over a lot of incentives for landowners, like if somebody were to gift the property, how the five-year tax benefits work. Um, and a conservation easement purchase versus a fee simple donation. Um, so there's some notes and that was led by Spinoff. Okay. So um, maybe lastly on the wetland ID, um, there were two, there was a two wetland scientists that held the talk, one of which was Rick Vanderpoel and Rick is out, he's a, a professor and he's you know, active both in the public and private sector as a wetland scientist. He happened to be, uh, do the mitigation for Walmart, which was the pond, one of which was the pond at uh, Kimball Hill Tom Forest. And so we had a good, quick discussion about that. And I asked him if he'd be interested in giving us a tour of what he did out there back in 91, and he said, sure. So, would you like me to contact him to see? I don't know if we, or if we or we can wait until uh, since we got the winter months coming up, um, we can wait until the spring. I can just kind of put that on the back burner and All right. maybe I'll send him a yeah I'll, I'll send him a quick email saying yeah we're interested but we'd like to do it in the spring. Okay, so we can see some growth. Okay. Um, so go for right. But yeah, it was a good meeting. Good, good. So I'll leave it at that okay. and, right. and chip um, away at. Moving on, Mr. Gagnon. Next one. Uh, so thanks for some of those references to the uh, New Hampshire Conservation Commission meeting. I, too, thought it was a phenomenal meeting, uh, very well put together. Like always, I highly recommend, if you guys can make it, really try to make it. It's not as boring as it may sound. There's a lot to learn. It's the really smart people who go, give really good talks. Uh, the opening discussion was a big forum about people from all over the industry, and they actually had the audience interact with them, which was very, very nice. Um, to what um, Mr. Dickinson was saying, the three classes I took um, were damages of separating large parcels. So you know, when you're putting roads or trails through the middle of a large parcel, a lot of animals actually want to go to the center of those parcels and how animals and different wildlife 
change based on you know uh, intersecting of trails and roads. The other one was the economics of conservation. So you know obviously how it affects your taxes and the state and so forth, which is very interesting. They also brought into uh, discussion about you know uh, bringing towns together in a kind of a harmonious way. So having trail systems come downtown to lead people down to get breakfast or what have you and then go back into the trails or the parks, connecting parks together. It was a very interesting discussion, um, kind of what you see down in town Nashville, where you have a, a walkway through the downtown, mm -hmm. but then also to their parks and so forth, really connecting everything in the town. Uh, and then the last one was the uh, eco development, which was interesting, about new development techniques that are eco friendly. So obviously, we talk a lot about uh, conservation uh, sub developments and so forth, um, you know, obviously, different pavements and so forth that use like that, uh, which was also quite interesting to me. I thought it might help when we see applicants. Uh, I was also pleasantly surprised, not only is the information they give there very good, but you meet a lot of people from the state and all over the town. Uh, as Mr. Dickinson said, he ran into a couple you know, professors um, and then New Hampshire, uh, the New Hampshire UNH uh, group there who works with conservation. You see them, but you also see all the, all the other conservation commissions. So I had someone from Litchfield and Nashua both come up to me. We had uh, lengthy conversations about topics in the region, um, and they were very interested to get together, whether it be in a professional setting or not a professional setting, to talk more and to partner with them with things that we do. So that that was very um, positive. And that's all I had. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I just, uh, um, if anyone out there is interested in volunteering, we're always looking for volunteers to help us out on work days, or if you're interested in walking the trails, um, please uh, contact Ms. Parkers. Um, uh, hopefully our website is up to date. I'll take a look. I haven't looked at it in a while. Um, but besides that, I have nothing else. I'm going to leave the last word to the chairman of the uh, selectmen, uh, Dave Morton. I'm all set. Thank you. You all set, really? Yeah, Mr. Collins. Oh, Mr. Collins? I just want to make an addendum to mine. Uh, sure. So, What's your uh, I would like to thank everybody who came out for the ribbon cutting at 68 Pelham Road. Oh, that we was have awesome. had a phenomenal turnout. And I'm going to put a shout out to my wife, Brenda, who pushed me along <laughs> right. and actually on. helped organize that, believe it or not. Behind the scenes, she is one heck of an organizer. So, uh, and the selectmen for attending. And uh, I thought it was a good turnout. We had a yeah, beautiful it was day. Uh, yeah, and it was well it was worth it. I, I think it was well worth it. So. You probably had about 50 people out there mm -hmm. and people walking the trails, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, it was a nice day. Uh, Peter Nori was there also. You know, so I mean, there was a lot of people to come out there and to celebrate uh, 68 uh, Pelham Road. You know, right? Great. Thanks, Mrs. Collins. Yes. <laughs> um, take a motion to adjourn. Uh, so moved. I'll second that. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion stands. 750.